Barada Pananda Nasweta. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to our second MCAL, the 2022 MCAL, based on another bit of Welsh mythology. And I hope that you're going to enjoy this one. It's slightly different. It has a triangular shape and it starts with a garter tab or a regular cast on. The only difference is if you are able to do the garter tab, it just produces a nicer start to your shawl. So when you're doing your triangle shawl, you're going to start right here where I've got my stitch marker. And if you are just to start with stitches, it you wouldn't have a nice little border area along there. And it's really hard to see how that is going to manifest itself. But there's some great tutorials online and I've recommended one online for you from Very Pink Knits. And that should help you go through it. But just make sure that you start with two stitches rather than three as she notes in hers and you're knitting seven rows before you then turn 90 degrees, turn 90 degrees to start your stitches. Once you've done that, you are ready to start your pattern. And for the first few rows, it is just a knit and a purl. The important thing in lace knitting, and I've noted this on the pattern as well, is that when you are going on the right side, you're reading the pattern from right to left. When you are on the wrong side, you read the pattern left to right. Starting with your garter tab, as previous in our last knit along, I always recommend you putting a stitch marker on the front of your work or the right side so that you know when you're on a right side row or a wrong side row. It's less of an issue with this pattern compared to one where you might be doing a lot of garter stitch, but it's always useful and then it helps you to keep track of your rows. Now I have started, built up from this tiny little section here where I started just with those three and then seven stitches and then I am expanding out this way and my pattern charting is one half here and then repeated for the other half here. So your triangle shawl is going to grow in this way. And I am about 43 rows in to the pattern. And this is the Starry Night pattern. Now it is not blocked, it is just as knit. It's going to look smaller because it's a lace pattern when you knit it. Really important as we get to the end, we're going to block it, it's going to stretch out, the pattern's going to be revealed, and it'll look more like this pattern because this is the Starry Night sample square. And you can see that as you stretch it out, it really starts to take shape, but you need to block it in order to do that. So don't worry if your shawl is looking a little bit small, it'll get stretched at the end. Okay, revealing all your nice lace patterns. So for this video, I mainly wanted to go over the slip one, knit two, pass slip stitch over, which creates the pattern alongside the yarn over on the purl side. So I'll just go through and knit a couple rows with you. As I say, I'm already a little ways on here and I'm starting at row 43. And in doing these rows, I'll be able to show you the right side yarn over, the purl yarn over on the wrong side, and then also the central bit getting you to the texture, which then creates the spine. Okay, so here we go. When you are on this row, you are always knitting the two border stitches. So we always knit two, regardless of which side we're on. Let me just get my yarn sorted out here. There we go. So regardless which side we're on, we're always knitting the first two and the last two of the very end of the row. And because we're on a right side, we're going to yarn over and then we are going to start our pattern. Um, so the yarn over is the start of the pattern and then you have two knit stitches in this case. And then you do the slip, knit two, pass slip stitch over. Now you can recognize this, it takes three stitches and you can recognize it, it's gonna end up being over top of your yarn over from the previous 
textured rows. So you'll start to recognize common themes as you develop your pattern. So you slip purlwise, then you knit two, one, two, and then you slip that stitch over and drop it. So it's a decrease really of one. Then you're going to knit three and you'll tell this is the yarn over from the previous row to three and then you do the same again. So you slip purlwise, knit two, pass, slip stitch over and then you knit three, one, two, three, purl, slip, one, two, pass, slip stitch over, knit three. So it's not, once you get into the rhythm of this, it's a really nice pattern. I am have become quite fond of it. So slip stitch purlwise, knit two, pass slip stitched over, knit three, and that middle one is your yarn over from the previous row. You'll recognize it, it'll feel different. Okay, knit three, and so we're on a slip purlwise, knit two, pass slip stitch over, knit three, slip purlwise, knit two, Slip purl stitch over, one, two, three, and I'm getting to the end, close to the end of my half here. So that's the slip one, knit two, purl stitch over, and then I'm left with two. So that's the same as I started with two, I'm ending with two, one, two, and then I've got a yarn over because I'm on the right side before I slip my marker and knit. Now this is the sort of awkward part. I like to make sure I've got my slip, my yarn over on the right side of my marker. And then I knit that slip stitch, slip the marker over, yarn over again to start the other side. And then I've got two knits because that's in my pattern before I start my slip, knit two, pass, slip stitched over. Okay, so I would do the same thing and finish to the end. So I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna come back to you to show you the opposite side. Okay, I'm at the end of the right side row, row number 43. And I just wanted to remind you about the yarn over. So I've got two stitches left on my left hand needle. And then I'm just gonna do the yarn over where I bring the yarn forward. And then I knit into the next stitch to create the border. So one, two for my border before I turn. Okay, so that's the right side row and now I'm just going to go over the wrong side row and that will show you the opposite yarn over. So I've just shown you the right side yarn over where you bring your yarn forward and then it goes over the needle as you knit the next stitch but for the purl it's a little bit, a little bit like a wrap around. So we're on the wrong side. This is row 44 now and I'm reading my chart from the left to the right. So I've got my two knits always to start. So one, two, and then I've got, that's the yarn over from the previous row. I'm gonna bring my yarn forward because I'm on the wrong side now and I'm gonna start my purls. So I've got one, two, three, four purls. And you can see here, as I'm taking this fourth purl, there's a little bar below it. 
that is your past slip stitch over on the previous round and you're separating that to create the yarn over so four pearls and then you've got your pearl yarn over and you wrap that around your right needle to bring it back to the front and then you purl and you're going to purl five in between but if you lose count you can recognize it this is it this is my bar here that's the fifth purl and then I'm going to wrap around to create my purl yarn over on the wrong side and then purl five more so I'll just carry it along here So that's five, yarn over, one, two, three, four. I'm using lace weight, by the way. Makes it a little bit slippier. Five, and then yarn over, one, two, three, four, five, and a yarn over. Okay, so that will get you through the wrong side rows for this pattern. Just remember that your yarn overs for the pattern texture are on the wrong side, so they are purled rows and purled yarn overs. So that's five and the yarn over. That's my yarn ball unraveling. Two, three, and then you have four to end like you started. Okay, then you slip your marker and you purl this time. No yarn overs. And you start again, two, three, four, and there is your long bar, your slip stitch over. And that's gonna be the signal for you to take one of those to separate that and create your pearl yarn over. So I think once you have a good sense of the texture for this pattern, you're going to be fine. It's a nice repeat. It gives you a good steady rhythm and there are recognizable features in this which will highlight when you're supposed to do the actions. And just to remind you that this is sort of what it looks like on the needles. Yes. And it's not very stretched out and it seems quite compact and it seems like you're not building up much. But remember, I'm working in lace weight, really quite fine. You could be working in fingering, but even the fingering might still bunch up a little bit until you block it. So it's gonna be important. And this is the blocked swatch. So you can see how all those little holes come up and it creates almost like a little braided effect, but it's the slip stitch over that happens alternately to create a diangular pattern and diagonal holes for you for this section. In some yarns, it'll look a little bit different. It'll look less textured. If you have a more textured yarn, you won't see the pattern as much, but it also, this one is blocked slightly less than the sample. If you stretch this out a little bit more, when you wanted to block it, if you blocked vigorously, then your pattern and your holes are gonna show up more. So these are decisions you're going to come to at the end when you've finished, but don't be discouraged if this is the image you're seeing on your pattern and this is what is showing up on your needles, then you are on the right track. Okay, so I'm at the end of the wrong side row. I've got two stitches left on my left hand needle. That's my border stitches. And I was on a purl because I'm on the wrong side, but I've brought my yarn forward because 
just to remind you, I'm knitting the last two stitches for my border and then I turn. Now, there is a reason why I started on this row and that is because I wanted to hit row 45, which is one of those rows where you start the slip one, knit two, pass slip stitch over after the yarn over at the very beginning. And that's a little bit of a tricky section. So I'm just going to quickly demonstrate it for you and then you're gonna be able to carry on with confidence. So I'm knitting two, stitches for my border and then I've got a yarn over so bringing my yarn forward I'm on the right side I'm going to then pass um, that slip stitch purl wise because that's the very first stitch and then carefully take my yarn over to knit and knit again and this is the part that can be quite tricky, just not mistaking the yarn over for your slipped stitch. So just try and keep track of which one that is so that you don't mix them up. That's the main difficulty in this section is just doing that slip one, knit two, pass slip stitch over right after the starter yarn over. But after that point, then you're into your regular pattern which is your knit three and then purlwise slip knit two pass slip stitch over so it's the same in the middle section when you get to here you're gonna have to do that same yarn over and then go right into the slip one knit two pass slip stitch over so just keep an eye on that. That's probably the trickiest part of this entire section is just when the yarn over and the slip one knit to pass slip stitch over interact with each other. If you can conquer that, you will conquer this whole section with a breeze. And we will see you next time for section two of the 2022 MCAL. I look forward to seeing you then and hope that you will Share with us your progress on via your socials to our socials at Textilia Cymru. Look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.